So in this communication, I would like to tackle some questions that actually are very coherent, I think, to what with what we just uh, we, we just uh, discussed with uh, Jean-Pierre Eskenazi and uh, Julia. Uh, so I want to stress what uh, Jean-Pierre uh, said. He talked about uh, uh, the, the notion of singularity, une singularité capable d'engendrer un flux privé, un point d'accumulation. Donc euh, aussi la question des, des mathématiques, hein, ça va revenir. And Julia talked about the idea of a continuity, which is uh, central, as you said, in this uh, situation. So I would like to tackle the questions of the links and interconnections that constitute the experience of television today in an era marked by proliferation, proliferation of paratextual um, content, both official and fan-made. So I will use here the term paratextual in the post genetian acceptation by Jonathan Gray, and uh, uh, including uh, so, um, the, 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 as, uh, the idea of appropriation, fan-made uh, content. So the theme is going to be explored. The theme of transmedia is going to be explored ex extensively in the next uh, panels. Therefore, I will not delve into uh, details that uh, we will discuss later today. Instead, I will develop some thoughts about. Uh, uh, the conceptual framework, an alliance uh, of uh, formal analysis, fan studies, um, cultural semiotics, digital humanities, and geography, and uh, approaches, namely distant reading, what uh, Franco Moretti uh, described as a, uh, an important tool to understand literature, so the idea of uh, uh, seeing from afar a big corpus of uh, books, like he talks about thousands and thousands of books instead of uh, traditional close analysis. Um, that may be useful to understand television and especially television seriality today with this idea of uh, extended, expanded uh, seriality. Within the larger framework of the uh, study of TV series as complex systems, I will ask, starting from some of the work that we're doing at the Labo Tele, the following question. What can digital tools makes us see, make us see about the relation between television's forms and platforms? As I will argue, they can help us describe television as a scalar phenomenon, so this looks like the nice snow that we have here in Montreal, but it's not. It's <laughs> uh, actually, um, the, so the, the idea of the, the scalar is a, is a fractal, so this idea of uh, the, this uh, going to, from microscopic to uh, macroscopic dimension, so that's a fractal. Um, so television can be television described as a phenomenon going from discrete to non-discrete or continuous experience. So these are some of the um, stats that we have. We're building a big database of uh, television uh, series, uh, including, uh, so these are the countries that uh, we're working on for the moment. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an image of the database, which is uh, completely, uh, we cannot read it. So this is some uh, extra. Uh, so we, we describe uh, te each television series, we have uh, 302 for the moment, uh, through uh, 45 categories, and in order to describe uh, both their formal uh, elements and paratextual elements. So for example, we include, uh, oh, oh, and we're talking about official paratexts in this case. So we have uh, all sort of uh, um, official websites, um, official Facebook, Facebook pages, uh, official Twitter, etc. in order to see uh, how much each series use this, uh, um, this paradox. Um, in order to study big, uh, big exam, big, uh, big corporate. So we said we, um, we studied, uh, all the series, uh, we're going through, we will, um, uh, aired uh, since the, the end of the 90s, so which was uh, the years uh, of the, when, uh, those paratexts uh, started to go online. Uh, another example, so we have here the, 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 um, some numbers, so it's more clear when we have uh, uh, percentages as here, so we can see uh, by genre how many uh, different uh, social networks are used. Uh, and you can uh, see something, but I will go back. So in order to describe uh, in details uh, each of these uh, images, uh, which we may do uh, at some other moment, I would like to understand uh, what uh, are the concepts at stake when we do this. So my question is, what uh, uh, can we uh, say about television by doing this, by using these digital tools, by uh, using this uh, quantity instead of quality? Um, so I would suggest that this distinction between discretion and non-discretion. Uh, continuity connotes unity, 
discreteness plurality. Discrete phenomena are granted by clear boundaries. They are composed of a finite or denumerable set of homogeneous simple units or uh, taken from the uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, to be discrete is to be separated like the scattered pebbles on a beach or the leaves on a tree. Non-discrete or continuous phenomena are instead those that do not have precise boundaries. I quote, the usual meaning of the word continuous is unbroken or uninterrupted. Thus, a continuous entity, a continuum, has no gaps. End of quotation. On the one hand, in order to grasp them, the, the, the uh, static object, we need to understand television series as discrete phenomena. So that's what uh, Jean-Pierre Eskenazi was saying about the idea of uh, not using the flow as a, using flow as a concept. On the other, the focus on world-building properties and or phenomena or reactivation of meaning, such as reboots or resurrections, brings us to think of non-discreteness as uh, an important quality in the current way we think of television and its networking platforms today. Contrary to atomism, many philosophers has discussed since the antiquity the possibility to think of a science of non-discretion in order to explain natural phenomena, starting from the common supposition that space and time are, space and time are continuous. For example, Leibniz's famous apothegm, natura non, fec non facit saltus, nature makes no jump. Television also could make no jump if we follow the much discussed notion of flow by Raymond Williams. So I'm not gonna go in uh, details on what was said uh, this morning, but the, in Williams' framework, it is an experience of multiple components that seamlessly unfold one after another over an indefinite amount of time with no cuts or boundary. Still, think of the TV trope, Jump the Shark, from the image of Fonzie in Happy Days, season five, episode three. Uh, which was used as a way to revive a series uh, that uh, was, um, was, was, was losing um, viewers. So this can be seen if we consider the idea of a series as a flow or a series as a continuous uh, phenomenon as a pulsation uh, um, in a, as a no, um, aimed at reviving the series in this case, or what uh, can be a link with what Jean-Pierre said about the idea of uh, a point d'accumulation, uh, a moment in which a series is uh, more intense, uh, is more intense, grows in uh, intensity. So Flows encourages us to think, co to consider the extent of a show as uh, a living phenomenon. So I use uh, the concept of uh, narrative ecosystem, uh, which is uh, used my, by my colleagues uh, in uh, Bologna, namely um, Guglielmo Pescatore and Veronica Innocenti. Yet, when we perceive a show as an aesthetic object, we discretize it. Viewers adapt their habits to the temporality of schedules, looking for individual objects. The discrete dimension of the episode is an evidence and a necessity if we want to follow a determinate series. Yet, binge-watching may encourage us to think of uh, the importance of another non-discrete form of viewing or the transformation of boundaries of television series into a continuous whole. So the idea of uh, continue watching. Yet, within this framework, the series still is a discrete experience. We choose to watch House of Cards uh, uh, that detaches itself from the flow. In this sense, uh, Fiske and uh, Hartley criticize uh, Williams' notion of flow by talking of boundary rituals. Uh, so from a structural or post-structural viewpoint, a series like film must be discrete because each one of its fragments, the episodes, need to be separated from the others. In fact, uh, thinking of it as a continuum, if we follow Deleuze, will fail to make sense of its multiplicity and therefore prevent us for, from thinking it as of a series. So that's what was just said this morning. The idea of repetition with a difference, the concept of interval secures for uh, Deleuze repetition. No difference means that nothing is repeated. All would be the same. Yet, there is a possibility of thinking of non-discreteness as a form of knowledge. There are examples like uh, Pierce's uh, Synechism, from Greek uh, Syneche or Continuous, a philosophy permeated by the idea of continuity in its sense of being connected. Also think of uh, the epistemology of complexity by Edgar Morin, who talks about complex system in which everything is interconnected and must be in order to, to create the, the meaning. Or also the idea of uh, semiosphere or the, 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 the very uh, space that allows any discourse and any thoughts. 
Uh, like film, a series is made of frames, shots, sequences. Uh, so in film studies, uh, um, if we don't want to, to use the idea of the grand syntagmatic by Christian Metz, but uh, the, 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 the idea that is popular in film studies, so the idea of... Uh, uh, autonomous segments that make sequences. Here we have a, a um, visualization tool which was developed by the um, Institute for Research and Innovation at the Pompidou Center in Paris, uh, which uh, at the same time shows us the film as a whole, but discretize each shot in order to study, to annotate, to work on it here for Nosferatu. Um, Yet, despite the necessary links between shots, the film as a text has a beginning and an end, and the single dimension of the shot is chosen as the basis upon which a language takes place. So is there a difference with television series? Any series is continuous according to its temporality, being not limited to one event, made of episodes and seasons. Um, moreover, TV series, and especially rich, paratext-filled temporary series, defy textual boundaries and require us to understand the relation between the parts and the totality. So I think, no, it's not the same uh, quote uh, Valentina put, but it's the same article. So in this framework, what should we do with the transmedia components of today's te television? Second screens, official websites, social network pages, web series, etc. Uh, they can be considered as uh, thresholds that contribute in creating a complex interaction in which the meaning is always rebuilt over time and in different places. They echo the show's genre, developing alternative realms where fans discuss the series and create new localized meanings. Should we consider them as discrete elements, so each one of these second screen or each one of these paratexts, adding to the discreteness of television text, or uh, instead as links that contribute in creating a continuous experience. Think of the notion of interstitial, which have a precise role within the flow and with the very logic of uh, commercial TV and its uh, survival. Contemporary strategies of proposing and repurposing content through multiple platforms and technologies aim at creating a continuity among the components of a complex narrative, playing on the cohesive power of affect and appropriation. So here is a, a, um, a, mod um, a model um, developed in Logic by uh, Kripke, uh, which uh, display different states of thought as interconnected possible words. This criterion, criterion of accessibility, which grants the development of meaning, is also interesting if you want to explain situation as a reboots or resurrection series or transmedia. We enter one mini world after another through connecting boundaries, moving translation zones, dynamic spaces that allow us to seek new meaning, looking for short-term satisfaction, creating bridges between otherwise parties snippets of media content. Non-discreteness can be understood as relation then. So, um, which is the very, also the, the very definition that Aristotle gives to, to continuity, the idea of joining together at some common boundary. So the idea of uh, boundary is particularly interesting and uh, problematic, yeah, if we want. Uh, should we, 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 and the, it is actually uh, the, the, the element which can under, help us understand the difference, if there's one, uh, between continuity and uh, just a position. Huh? Uh, the, the importance of, uh, uh, of boundary. Um, such a non-discretion that I hope I can uh, display through this mm, reflection uh, brings us to consider media and technology as bound into a quali quantitative but also qualitative new experience. What kind of knowledge are we building and is it specific to television? It may be a matter of layers and angles of observation. Contemporary digital platforms display uses. Um, they show greater readability of relations and interaction. We chose to use digital uh, visualization tools from a humanist approach uh, in which the living element must be at the core. And that living dimension can be seen as a non-discrete phenomenon, that, which is, a, so, so my point is that the, the, the living dimension of this system is non-discrete and we can see it when we use tools that show or build its non-discretion. Non-discretion appears here more necessary a, a concept when we consider digital tools for the analysis of contemporary platforms. So such tools seems to s suggest that instead of opposing discretion to non-discretion, 
both qualities are to be considered as part of a televisual spectrum. Also think that any form of seriality forces us to consider the long durée, huh? the long dur duration or the set of microscopic events that constitute the long, almost immobile co um, history or level of time compared to the haste and visibility of major historical events. Uh, so I use the, here geographical maps made through GIS system that transform in two points the element of our database. So we take all the, um, more especially the, the geographic data, but also all the other data that are transformed in two points and put into different layers on these maps. And they help us situate uh, the series, the uh, series location. So you have here a large one. We have series by film location, series by country, series by diegetic location, series by production location and country of origin. The series colonizes the space, the actual space, and gives us the image of a transnational proliferation, thus creating a new space, its own space. Digital tools prove the groundedness of a series into the social space. GIS maps function thanks to point on a microscopic level, so there is a, a first discrete step that help us build a non-discrete image in which mm, question may arise when we see the mass, when we see the, the, the distance, when we see from afar using what Moret call, Moretti calls distant reading. Um, so a series can also be a continuum when we see it. Uh, this is another map that shows GIS uh, geolocalization from social networks. So for example, I took uh, um, starting from uh, Grey's Anatomy, but all the all the YouTube videos uh, with the 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 title uh, Grey's Anatomy or uh, Flickr Instagram, which is not here, but we can we can do that with any uh, major uh, social networks. Um, this shows traces of uses concerning a specific uh, show, and again we see the idea of a evolving living being. Um, like a forest or a river, it is a measurable value, but maybe not countable. What matters is its mass, the amount of data and spatial distribution. At a closer view, some moments may appear as more visible, more intense, or some places, uh, here, here Seattle, for example, for uh, the uh, diegetic uh, reason, of course, uh, they are like pulsation that dynamize a non-discrete phenomenon. Some visualization tools display the density and connection of a network. So the more, the better, the bigger the data, the more precise the measurement will be. These are more questions than um, the answers. Uh, so the form and the plurality of official and fan-made platforms of a show are not reduced to a binary opposition, interior, exterior. Their position varies, their location and relocation tells us sometimes more than the content. Uses transform space and space transforms uses, bringing to the foreground something which otherwise may be uh, in the background. So the nature and concept uh, I don't know why it's black, of uh, discretion and non-discretion are affected by the use of digital tools. Uh, as I said, so for example, when we create a map, we start from discrete points. Issues that may um, raise. Uh, the amount is important, but the process is still opaque since collecting data is not a contact with users, neither a close analysis of uses. So what about the mediation of a machine? Is it a reduction of human gestures to calculation? Is this a way to universalize, therefore to flatten the results, the human dimension? Or on the contrary, is it, contrary, is it the true possibility to trace a microhistory or an histoire immobile? In this case, how can, can we exactly find the place of these interactions? And finally, what images of the series emerge? How can we recognize when we have uh, new knowledge? Mass and intensity are the important notions that raise new questions to the object. So in order to conclude, I, used, uh, no, I want to um, explore new digital practices in TV and I use digital tools to understand them. So there is an identity of the space analyzed and the object of the analysis. The spectrum of the discretion and non-discretion of television today depends on both production strategies and uses and it shows that more than ever, television is made of an interesting balance between extensive and intensive qualities. A series is performative when it is embedded, embedded in complex layers. It is able to perform a role in society, to play a role in the way society shapes, or a certain society 
uh, shapes its own meaning when its forms and platforms, often recently more than one, interact on more than one level. Each one of its elements it's, is an individual sign that functions in its own context, yet it is also a seed which is part of a larger non-discrete phenomenon that is made of all of them. So the idea of uh, spreadability or media sp spreadability, this, uh, this constant dissemination of meaning and potential for a series to grow in space and time to, to expand. So taking into account uses and the traces of such uses, we obtain the image of an even more complex object built over long temporality or spread in large spaces that we cannot easily count. Maybe we can measure it, but uh, uh, there is maybe a difference between counting or doing a close analysis or uh, identifying single object and uh, uh, taking for an object uh, the mass uh, or the quantity. So this is just uh, uh, um, some preliminary uh, remarks that uh, may lead to some uh, more uh, questions, which is uh, the, the, the aim of these maps, I think. It's more uh, instead of uh, finding answers, uh, uh, before the first step would be to finding maybe new questions. So with that, uh, I can uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you. Il y a déjà une question qui arrive, allez-y. Thank you, Marta. This is a fascinating project. It's actually just a quick question for some more information. Could you say a little more about how you go about with this data collection? Yeah, so <laughs> here I have to Coffee. thank uh, my dear students. Uh, who uh, did a great job until now of uh, manually taking down all this data. So that's a pretty crazy um, project for the moment, but we're actually waiting. So they're basically going on all different uh, websites, comparing sources, mainly from uh, IMDB, about these uh, more formal elements like uh, author, um, yeah, writers, uh, titles, years, uh, number of seasons, number of episodes, uh, medium length uh, of each episode. So these are data that are easily, easily uh, extractable from IMDb. So what we're doing for the next step is using an algorithm which is going to do it for us. So we're waiting for our next uh, yeah, collaborators who are going to help uh, on this. So this more formal part is more uh, automatic, will be. Uh, for what is about the, um, the paratext or the social media, it's, uh, it must be manual because they have to go on website and uh, describe, uh, uh, because it's not only do they have a website, yes or no, but there are many other categories to describe uh, whether there are interactions or sort of games uh, or other type of um, interaction. Is that the, the right title of the category? So Camille may have some deti details or more questions. So that, that's for the, for the database, uh, manual for the moment, uh, mostly by algorithm, but still manual for the next uh, step. Uh, whereas the GIS, um, tools that we are using with a collaboration with the geography department uh, help us extract all this data directly. So what is uh, seen in the um, YouTube uh, Flickr, it's automatic, so you can do it with any series. Uh, we can show you that later. Still, of course, it has many biases in terms of what title do you choose, uh, what language do you use. So, of course, we are aware of that and that uh, must be taken into account every time. Je vais continuer ma métaphore de tout à l'heure. René Tom disait, continuer, quand un mathématicien est confronté à un espace fondé sur une continuité non discrète, Euh, Qu'est-ce qu'il fait Quel est, quel est, son, quel est son, euh, son geste propre pour rendre signifiant euh, un, Tu peux reprendre la question que tu posais tout à l'heure, tout à fait à la fin. Euh, c'est de construire une distance. Euh, je veux dire, par exemple, une distance, qu'est-ce que c'est C'est d'abord d'avoir de, de, une unité, une unité de mesure, et puis ensuite de construire point par point, par exemple, le point le plus près de zéro, 
bah, ça va être 1. Et le point le plus près de 1, ça va être 2. On va donc pouvoir constituer des points à l'intérieur de ça. Les points, alors des, ça peut être des distances et des écarts. Bon, je passe les, les choses mathématiques là-dessus. Mais est-ce que c'est pas ça la solution Est-ce que, est, est que, est que la solution pour rendre signifiant ton, 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 ton espace multicouche, multidimensionnel, euh, donc un espace, euh, oui, on, euh, avec plusieurs types de couches non discrètes, enfin un, un, un espace à n dimensions, c'est de, de, de concrétiser des formes de distance différentes, hein, au, sens, au sens vraiment mathématique, où je l'ai dit, mais construites autour de concepts qui sont, qui sont, qui sont à, à, à faire fonctionner pour rendre signifiant ce, ce grand espace. Est-ce que c'est pas ça la tâche, en quelque sorte hein, mm -hmm. à, Finalement, c'est une tâche scientifique. <rire> Un vrai mathématicien ne serait pas, sera pas trop dans, dans, dans le projet. Okay, okay. Ouais, oui, merci. C'est vraiment l'idée. Qu'est-ce que c'est qu'une distance Est-ce qu'on est, qu est vraiment en train de construire une distance Et... Une Qu distance que... au, au, au sens de une forme, une forme de mesure. Mmh. Hein c'est ça, c'est hein, quelque chose pour tout mesurer. Fait, tout à fait. Et qu qu'est-ce qu que la comparaison entre différentes distances peut ouais. nous dire par rapport au... Ça, ça c'est le vrai geste intellectuel, absolument, construire ce, ce qu'on veut mesurer. Voilà. Parce que de toute façon, il y, aura, ça, il y a quand même plusieurs niveaux qu'il faut oui. forcément prendre en compte. Oui. Euh, si on se rend compte qu'il y a une pulsation, alors on va voir plus, plus, en bas, plus en bas, donc on réduit la distance et on va voir ce que c'est. Oui. Ou alors si on voit qu'il y a une, une interaction en Corée du Sud par rapport à Fargo, non, c'était ça, non On s'est dit mais non, en Corée du Nord hein, par rapport à Fargo, on s'est dit mais c'est quoi ça euh, Est-ce que c'est une erreur de, de la base de, 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 de calculation, de la géolocalisation, c'est possible Ou alors est-ce que c'est vraiment une appropriation de fans euh, on aurait, à laquelle on n'aurait jamais pensé. L'hypothèse de fractalité, c'est une hypothèse qui, 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 qui dit qu'on peut regarder ce qui se passe dans un petit... Enfin, je veux dire, le calmant... Est-ce que vous prenez ça vraiment au sérieux ou pas Est-ce que vous considérez que c'est un espace fractal Parce que je, 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 non, enfin, j'ai du mal à croire ça. C'est vrai qu'effectivement, dans chaque étape, il y a quelque chose de différent, dans chaque niveau peut-être. Donc on ne reproduit pas exactement la même structure. Est-ce que c'est -ce est la structure qu'on cherche C'est ça la question, peut-être. Les, 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 les espaces fractaux, enfin, les fractales ont des, des propriétés quand même. Enfin, il, faut, il faut bien regarder le concept hein, pour pouvoir l'utiliser. C'est compliqué, quoi. J'aime bien un mathématicien de la salle quand on fait des métaphores mathématiques. Mais, 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 <rire> non, non, mais, mais ça Je vous rappelle que vous l'avez utilisé vous aussi, hein, oui. les métaphores. Mais ça ouais. <rire> Alors, euh, s'il n'y a pas d'autres questions urgentes, j'en ai, ai une par rapport au, au, au séduisant « Jump the Shark euh, », avec des types de scénarisation qui sont tout à fait différentes, avec des séries de beaucoup moins longue durée, euh, et aussi euh, une maîtrise et un contrôle euh, des enchevêtrements narratifs d'autre ordre. Est-ce que euh, il, comment dire, ce, ce, ce type de modèle euh, de, la, de la pulsation, avec un, un terme plus, euh, plus sérieux, euh, est, 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 est tout est utile pour euh, lire euh, des productions contemporaines, sérielles, réalisées directement par des diffuseurs euh, Internet, où euh, comment dire, le contrôle de la scénarisation ne, mm. ne, ne, ne travaille plus vraiment avec cette perméabilité. Et autrement dit, tout le travail des fans sur les séries courtes ont, ont le temps de les influencer ou ça n'a un influence seulement la production de saisons ultérieures mm -hmm. dans les échantillons que vous avez déjà traités Donc, euh, euh, oui, non, par rapport à l'échantillon qu'on a traité, on n'a pas vraiment pu, pour l'instant, aborder cette question véritablement. Donc, euh, par rapport au... Peut-être l'intuition quand même qu'il qu qu y en ait, ça vient plus de la... Should I speak in English or... mm. <laughs> uh, so the, the idea of um, we don't have the data, Camille you can say if it's right or not, but we don't have the data to say right now if we exactly have pulsations except the, more vis the, the, the visibility of uh, some spaces like in that case uh, something that we could show is the visibility of some uh, media events or something that goes closer mm -hmm. to a media event yeah. like the end of the fifth season of Game of Thrones mm -hmm. Uh, what happened in the Twitter sphere mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to the point of uh, 
saying that they w- this will have an influence on how the series was written mm-hmm. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So that will need uh, uh, an, uh, interviews with the writers. Okay. So I'm not. Uh, that's not my my aim. So my aim is to display um, cultural space in which these traces mean something in the complex mm-hmm. system yeah. with the text, but. Uh, surrounding the text uh, and creating that new uh, sphere without doing predictions, I would say, on how the series will develop, mm-hmm. uh, but indeed doing uh, connections on how the series creates. So maybe the uh, cliffhanger actually is one of the points that may be uh, interesting, and there still are more seasonally. So that's something that we saw. Uh, more seasonally than uh, um, from episode to another, of course, because of the possibility of uh, m- deciding how to um, access the content. Mm-hmm. So that that's something that we saw, the, the, the enhanced uh, importance of um, cliff- seasonal cliffhangers. Okay. So I have the mic, so. <laughs> um, I'm wondering about, the, you know, the notion of... Uh, of cultural forum, the newcomer in here type, you know, and this is, this is my thing. I take 70s theories and I try to see how they fit or, you know, no longer fit. Uh, it seems like with that, one of the ele- important elements in that theory is, is the question of, again, in the old uh, world where everybody watched three networks in the US or in Israel it was just one, so, right, the next day everybody get together and talk about it. So are you sort of tracing in a sense the type of, of text that can create such a, a surge? I mean, I've been, again, doing with my students this question, of what does create a cultural form, right? When we were talking about Netflix bef- before, it was very obvious that you don't have that, uh, everybody's watch- simultaneity of consumption. Mm-hmm. Um, and so something like Game of Thrones is this, you know, they're still using that live to air, or, you know, airing the same time and mm-hmm. the piracy in Australia. So that's something that creates a surge. Um, a lot of my students, we end up kind of landing on what is, what still creates that, you know, viral content. Beyonce does mm-hmm. something, or there's a beheading, or, you know, these are the kind of uh, sites right now that, that do create some sort of, but again, it's not everybody's going to watch at the same time and w- talk tomorrow, but let's say within 24 hours, mm-hmm. everybody will watch yep. or hear about the beheading and not watch it. And so that, I'm just wondering if this converges with some of theoretically with what you're tracing mm-hmm. are these moments that do create, you know, maybe not simultaneous, but within 24, 48 yeah, yeah, yeah. a week. Uh, we have the tool to do that because the GIS map uh, of, from with the geolocalization of tweets can, uh, uh, we can select, uh, see all the tweets uh, created in the next 24 hours or in the next three days or, so that that's interesting to see how differently uh, countries react. So the, just for a technical re- answer. Tweets about, about all the people that, you know, I mean, I'm curious about how can we, you know, then start creating... Yeah, no, maybe well, one... Um, sites, so many sites where people exactly. know, do or do not now mm. converge in that same old way that Absolutely. we had for talking about television mm-hmm. network era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, that's totally the, an interesting question. Maybe the first uh, uh, more formal part, uh, so the analysis of official paratexts, may tell us uh, how the strategy, the, 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 the networks uh, create uh, strategies. So, you know, continuing what uh, also Valentina said a little bit, uh, we can uh, e- easily say what work, what is used for what series and for what network, uh, seeing so how they try to create this cultural form. And then uh, maybe another step would be the use of sentiment analysis uh, in a more broad uh, uh, space and more different uh, uh, websites, etc., and not only those major social networks that are used here. Of course, that would be a limit because we cannot uh, see everything. So that's why I'm very cautious by saying uh, we're doing that in this context uh, with these tools. That, that is not, but uh, I, I like the idea of uh, seeing how scattered these uh, cultural forums are, for example. So it's not one single or three big, but of course it's uh, depending the, the social media and depending the type of content and the, the, the network, because there are many different uh, strategies. For example, Netflix and uh, Amazon don't have official website because they are a website. Uh, now, which is interesting because many, ad- like HBO or any other network, develop official websites. That's that's one basic difference, which tells a lot on how the you know on one case 
uh, Netflix and uh, Amazon, the series are branded on social net or on social network that relate to the um, to the main uh, to the provider to the content provider. So we have the Netflix official um, f Facebook page, which is for all the series, whereas uh, HBO created uh, also specific displays for each of its content, which is not always the case for the series uh, from other. Grazie, Marta. Dernière intervention de la matinée, Monsieur La Perrière. Um, oui. Qu'est-ce qu'il y en a des manifestations qui ne sont pas localisables, comme sur les forums, par exemple? Comment les appréhender, puis comment les inclure dans la carte? Mm. Ou est-ce qu'il faut faire une autre carte pour eux? Oui. <rire> non, c'est vrai que, euh, oui, the, the, the map shows the, the, yeah, the, the point, if we want to make a map, we need the geolocalization. And that we, if we don't have it, we need. To, we can do sentiment analysis. We can do other form of quantitative analysis. But uh, yeah, there was one of the negotiation points with the geographer because they need those geographical coordinates. So if not, uh, we don't have a map. Mm. Maybe no. Maybe we could try to develop other strategies. But uh, at least we can know from what country the official page is from. But we never know if mm -hmm. uh, people who write on that page come mm -hmm. from that country. So. Merci, pour la Merci Viva.